we finished till uh, the difference between mixed cropping and intercropping okay okay now we will be doing the third part which is the crop protection management okay so okay. now the third is basically we have done all the two now this is the third part how will you protect the crop it includes protection of growing crops and harvested crop so it means whatever crop you have grown you have to protect that as well and once you harvest the crop you have to protect damage also right so we insect pests and diseases infects the field crop it can be controlled by adopting following methods so first of all to grow resident vertis right resident vertis means grow those crop which are not prone to the pest attacks and all that right optimum time of sowing the crop like use your maximum time in sowing the crop why at the correct time like when like for example we know that the monsoon will start from this so accordingly we grow our crops right so similarly we grow the crops like that crop rotation and crop system should be followed so that you know pests are not usually attacking your crop because they know sometimes you are growing something else sometimes you are growing something else so it will go like that and deep logging on summer to kill weeds pathogen etc that is summer ploughing right so in summer basically do the deep ploughing right so because of this what will happen it will kill the weeds and the pathogens as well okay this is what now let us understand one by one like how to weed control what is weed control so weeds you know that they are the unwanted plant which grow on their own along with the crop plants right so they grow on their own along with the crop plant examples are some zentium which are known as gogru perithium they are known as gazer grass caprian rodens they are known as motha so you can write one or two these two are important you can write these two the growth of wheat full is harmful because of the following reason now the thing is that okay ma'am for example this is your crop weeds are growing over here so what to use ma'am why they are harmful right why they are considered as unwanted first thing the weeds consume lot of nutrients right so for example i am giving food to this plant right but side by side we have weeds as well so what will happen they consume lot of nutrients so they try to snatch it right from the main plant uh, they consume lot of nutrients sunlight water and fertilizer therefore reducing crop production right because they are using the sources using the material which we are giving to the plant which we need but they are taking it from there so automatically and it occupies space meant for the crop thereby crop uh, reducing crop yield and lower the quality of the grain so what they are doing for example over here i can grow 10 plants right but because of weeds i can only grow five plants because in five places weeds are grown right so there is no yeah. space for the plants to grow the weeds spread very fast because they produce a large quantity of seeds right so over here weeds start spreading too fast right because they produce large quantity of seeds so when you will say uh, they are spreading all over and there is no space for the actual plant to grow so that's why they are harmful and therefore they are known as unwanted plants clear yes ma'am now ma'am what is weeding so the process of removing the weed from the crop yield is called weeding now it is how it is done first of all you will pick the weeds by your hand removal by instrument like there's a instrument known as trowel which is khurpa you dig it you remove it you dig it you remove it Mm -hmm. or there are some chemicals like e example 24d which is 24d dilog uh, dichlorofloxacin acetic acid uh, butaclor atrazine all this are basically the names of weed sites use this medicine and use this chemical and they will be like you will you can kill weeds and control of weeds by biological method in this method some selective insect or other organism are put into crop field having weeds these insect or organism selectively destroy the weed plant without harming the crop plants right so example cochineal insect are used to remove weeds called optonia right clear yeah. so these are basically the methods how you can remove the weed now there are some cultural methods as well right so right now first of all what we are doing we are doing crop protection so first i told you control your weeds you can have a good protection for your crop right second yeah. is there are some cultural methods right through which you can protect your crop and how proper seed bed preparation timely sowing in crop intercropping and all that they are the cultural method which people are see not every time from the ancient time not everyone is having the chemicals right so they were mm. having something they were following these methods like bed preparation timely sowing of crop intercropping crop rotation to control the weed crop okay okay now uh, this is a cultural method basically next one now there is second weed control is done now the pest control pest are basically the insect weed are the plants pest are the insect sometimes you will see that there is a pest attack right 
So yeah. what is the press attack, ma'am? Usually the insect, which is which are known as press attack by the plant by producing following three types of symptoms. By cutting plants like root, stem and leaves, by sucking cell sap from various pla plant parts, they bore into stem and fruits. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, of course, to kill a pest, you need something. So that is a pesticides. It was weedicides, which were you were using here, pesticides. So chemicals which can kill, of course, here you cannot kill the pests with the help of your hands, right? So you need only the chemical, which is pesticides. So chemical which can kill or destroy the pests are called pesticides. Example, Bordurex mixture, mixture of copper sulfate, lime, 4 to 4 ratio. Pesticides are several types depending on the type of pest killed to control. For example, if there is fungicide in your crops, you will use this fungicide to kill fungi, to insect, insecticides, to nematodes, nematicides and to rodent like the waste and all that then the rodent side and to herbs if there are unwanted herb, herbicides in say then herbicides clear yes ma'am okay so first you will write crop protection management then weed control then the pest control okay ma'am
Mama finished. Mom finished.
Mom, I finished.
Mom, I finished. Okay. Now over here, there are some plant diseases as well. Mom, what are these plant diseases? Like the black stem rust of the wheat, loose tongue of wheat, late blight of potato. These are the diseases. So sometimes what happens, they will give you the example and they will ask you what are these. So they are basically the plant diseases, right? Okay. Yes, ma'am. So now we already did like when you are growing the crop, you have to protect your crop from the weeds as well as from the pest. Now, once the crop are harvested, you will store them, right? So first of all, yes. storing of grains need for shade. Over there also, there can be some disease or something, right? So first of all, ensure availability of grain throughout the year. So you have to make sure that, for example, 10 kg of grain you produce, you have to make sure that it should lie for all the years. It facilitates distribution to far away places of the country. So over here, it should be distributed far away places of the country. And grain are harvested once in a year. However, due to fixed eating habitat, they are needed regularly throughout the year. So over here, grains are only harvested in one at one time, once in a year, but everyone use grains, right? So over here, they need regular supply. So you should produce in such a way that you should store in such a way instead of wasting it so that it will last for one year. It helps in making buffer stock for emergency period. So over here, uh, uh, because of this also, why you need to store? Because if you will store the grains, it will help in buffer stock. And for surplus food available, storage is required. So these are the need why you should store the food. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Now, how will you store? So there are perceivable material like who gets spoiled easily. They are perceivable food material, right? So the food material which gets spoiled easily on keeping for some time at room temperature is called perceivable food. Like fruits, vegetable, fish, meat and all. Therefore, they should be stored in the cold storage, right? And non purchasable mm -hmm. food material, they are basically which do not get spoiled even after keeping for a longer period of time. They are non purchasable like food grains and all that. So over here, they can be stored at the dry storage method. Clear? So on the basis of whether they are purchasable or non purchasable you will decide whether you are going to store it into cold storage or the dry storage method. Okay? Okay. Now remember one thing, no non purchasable food material is stored on commercial scale in grainy bags or in grain stores. Right, so they bag and all that they are stored over here. The stored food yeah. grain are generally attacked and damaged by pests such as insect and rotten. Right, therefore, the stored yes. food grain should be regularly checked to detect infectious uh, yeah. infestations while storing the grain applicable of pesticides by either spraying like methomians, pyrifen, DDT, or any other thing. You should spray over there, right? And like red poison, rodent, and like zinc sojourn should be done at regular intervals. Clear. So that if you are storing, because uh, these ones, they are storing in cold storage. So cold storage, if any pest will be there, they will die itself. But here, you are storing them in, uh, you know, bags, gunny bags, sacks and all that. So therefore, you should spray all this in and re on regular intervals, you should check what is the condition of these storage food. Okay. Okay. Yes.
Mom, I finished.
Now I'm finished. Okay. Now next one is organic farming. Okay, so through organic farming also, like there's oh. a concept. So ma'am, what is this organic farming? So organic farming avoids the use of systematically oh. compound fertilizers, pesticides. Organic farming rely upon crop rotation, crop residue, animal manures, legumes, green manures, off farm, organic waste, biological pest control, etc. Right. So what are the objectives of organic farming to develop sustainable agriculture system? To develop an alternative strategy over chemical farming, this system rely upon resources within own resources. Clear? So these are the objectives that instead of going for here and there, these are the things you will do on your own. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Uh, in your school, have they taught about the animal husbandry and all that? Uh, uh, animal husbandry, yeah, we, had, uh, we had only one small paragraph we had it about last year. Uh, like, okay, so because you know it's deleted somewhere, na? so they are not teaching you. But if you want, because there are some other things like you know, poultry farming and all that, so do you want me to teach this fish farming and all that for your extra knowledge? Because your mom told me that you want the particular knowledge, like apart from the bookish languages, na? Bookish yeah, part, ma'am. Ma ma it's maybe better if you teach what is in the NCA, like what is there for the exam or in the book, because I don't want to finish this lesson, that's why. Okay, okay. Just write it down and let me just check it once. Like after updated slippers and accordingly yeah. we can do those topics. Okay, just do the organic farming. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, I finished. Okay. So basically, we have to do this as well, animal husbandry. Like our part is included over there. Right? Yes. Hmm. So animal husbandry is, ma'am, what is this? The science of rearing, feeding, caring, breeding, and disease control of animal is called animal husbandry. Right? First of all, you should properly feed the animals, providing them fresh water and good shelter. 
proper health and protection against diseases and proper breeding of animals, right? Now, ma'am, what is the need for animal husbandry to ensure proper nutrition to our growing population, right? Advantage, increased milk production through cattle farming, increased egg production through cattle farming, improvement of quality of meat through fish farming, pig farming, goat farming, proper utilization of animal waste and to produce more of honey bees wax through bee beekeeping and all that clear yes ma'am so you, you can only write this what is animal husbandry what is the need and what are the advantages 